All right, guys, I'd just like to welcome everybody to the Independent Investor Channel live stream. It's certainly a couple hours of a break from my normal routine to come on and spend some quality time with you guys. I absolutely value your time as I value mine as well. So certainly want to give uh, some heads up and a shout out uh, to all the channel creators that have again made their way in this week. They're certainly the core and the backbone of this group. It helps me keep a, a good tally on folks. It helps me engage and have a lot of different perspectives floating around in here, guys. There's a lot of large portfolios. There's a lot of starting portfolios. There's some folks in the group here who are starting to dabble in real estate. Uh, so all, all kinds of different backgrounds really from, from all over. Um, there's, there's some folks in the community here that are representing from abroad. And, and so uh, no barriers here on the Independent Investor Channel at all. I do have a guest that's been nice enough to pop in the studio. I would have just continued to speak with Chris. He, he was nice enough to come on and you know, he was like, man, I've been following your channel a long time and uh, I'd like to dig a little bit more into that because that's kind of been the root of the message and theme this week. Uh, you guys know I kind of uh, march to the beat of my own drum. All right. I uh, do my own thing. And if it means getting six or seven hundred views to put out a core investing video, those six or seven hundred people are wiser for it. Uh, there's no doubt about it. And it gives me a pulse check of the community as well on who's really tuning into those videos with the sheer intent of wealth building. No doubt about it. And so that's just my singular approach to this channel. Most of the folks that have followed me for many, many moons know that that's kind of how I roll. And that's how I'll continue to roll, because for me, uh, if I start to deviate, then my longevity and my motivation typically takes a notch back. And uh, I've been doing this uh, for a little while now, anyway, um, going on about three years here on YouTube. And, uh, you know, it's um, it's been one of those projects that has been absolutely just like an investment. Honestly, if I had a, a ticker symbol for the independent investor channel, I do approach this channel like I like I approach investing, and I I do really try to provide that right amount of attention and feedback to the group. I had some really really awesome stuff happen this week. Um, some folks that had taken me up on some opportunities uh, to speak with me informally uh, on a Zoom meeting. I, I've I've who pretty much put that olive branch out there uh, for many, many years. And it's amazing to me how few people take me up on that. No big deal. We're just changing lives. Okay. And this isn't rocket science. I'm not a doctor. I I'm not going to jump out and give you a back massage through YouTube. What, what I can do is draw some awareness to the stock market and investing. And maybe it's something to where you kind of have an idea about what you want to deploy with your plan. And maybe you just want to bounce it off of someone. And, and, and I think in this particular case, that's exactly what this individual was trying to do. And uh, really, really take a lot of a lot of pride in being able to provide some some insights back and, and provide some uh, some some interesting ideas and. M1 Finance is really making that opportunity uh, a lot easier for me. For a lot of folks that have followed me for a long time, you guys know that I attempted to break down my investing philosophy that would apply to the three styles of investing, beginning, intermediate, and advanced investor. I don't need to do that anymore. M1 Finance allows me to go on and build a portfolio and I'm going to look to leverage that opportunity. You guys know that I do the portfolio reviews and rollouts. That's great for tutorial purposes and to explore um, the, the opportunities on the platform. But to actually share investing information, uh, I had a great discussion with Gen X Dividend Investor, who's also in the group this week about that. Um, so there, there are absolutely a lot of opportunities, not only for the new investor, but also for the channel creators in the group. 
And I think we could probably establish some level of focus group on that uh, across our good community, starting with none other than JMAC Investing, who gets the shot out of the week tonight. Uh, it was well earned, no doubt about it. Um, I clicked into his uh, new video today, which I encourage everybody to uh, to watch that. It, it's good. I thought it was the best JMAC video so far. They're all good. It's just fun for me from my lens to watch Jason evolve as a content creator. And uh, I, I clicked into the video. I was interesting to see the review on um, uh, on. Uh, uh, on the stock, it was uh, the Kings, the stock market, the the Casino Kings, right? I'm forgetting the the ticker symbol. Uh, if you want to throw it in there, Jason, you can. I'm just drawing a blank on it. But I was really, really, I was really, really interested in what Jason kind of premised at the top of the live stream, and it really made me think back to when I was a new investor starting to build my portfolio and starting to dabble in other money making strategies. And uh, I really, really commend Jason for doing the responsible thing for putting it. Yep, it was uh, um, yep, DraftKings. Thanks, Jason. Um, you know, by putting out a, a little bit of a, a, a kind of a, a, a message to new investors that may make their way to the channel, not just to stumble in and, and then next Monday stump, stumble into the stock that he's reviewing. Um, not really sure if I agree that it's necessarily a spec play. I, I know exactly what he was talking about, but I appreciated the fact that he put his entire portfolio up there and said, you know what, I've got this established piece here and here I'm dabbling, you know, in, in this play, did diligence on the stock and, and, and had some familiarization and some interest in the field, right? Um, which is kind of a, a, an, an underappreciated aspect of investing, uh, understanding what you're investing in. And, and, and Jason was wearing his jersey, <laughs> but uh, we'll, we'll leave that alone for a while. But, um, but it was really cool. Um, and, and I appreciated the fact that he was able to separate the investing piece uh, to the portfolio and, and then really try to corral his mental makeup and thought process for taking a strategic shot at uh, th this this new stock, right? Which was um, which was DraftKings. So I thought it was really cool. He's got kind of a hot hand. Um, he he was able to render some profit off of uh, Ricola. I'm just kidding, Nicola. Ricola. You guys remember that? The cough drop company. Uh, he's got he's got some free shares in the cough drop company now. But uh, <laughs> anyway, you know, I, I think for for an, an investor that's ill prepared to come in and catch that content without that preliminary justification, uh, I think it's important for new investors to really sit back and say, wow, hold on a second, man. And I, I, I gave Jason a $50,000 goal this year. I don't know if y'all re remember last fall. I was like, okay, well, his next threshold is 50 grand. And he's kind of, he's kind of setting up to meet that goal here mid year uh, by July. I mean, he, he, if we get a, a favorable market, he'll end up meeting that first threshold at 50,000. That's a big one. Yeah, that's a big one. That feels real good. Um, not quite as good as a hundred for obvious reasons, but uh 50 is a big, a big milestone, man. And, and not quite as big as 10 either. Um, but uh, you know, good on Jason for continuing to doing that good work. And uh, I, I just thought it was a good offering and um, split the video up into some really good sections. It was a good review uh, of the, of the offering. I just, I wanted to touch a little bit more uh, below the surface on on what I understood about that offering and how new investors can look at that and say, wow, man, th th this guy's dabbling. It's, he's not gambling. You know, he's taking a strategic shot. And, and sometimes in life, that's really what it takes is to, to say, you know what, I'm going to take a strategic shot. And he did it and he was rewarded for it. And I just want to premise in this community, I really want a foot stomp that every one of you guys Understand that success is not something that needs to be feared. It's not something that needs to be looked at as elusive. It is absolutely something that I expect each and every one of you guys to expect. That, that's it. So 
there was a little bit of, uh, I felt like, uh, apology a little bit uh, from Jason, man. Don't don't apologize for that stuff, man. That was your money. That was your investment. And I applaud good investments because what it does is it proves uh, somewhat of what I've been saying for many, many years on YouTube is that investing is a great wealth generating vehicle. And I think it also proves the fact that perhaps maybe having one style of investing, it may not be in anybody's best interest. And that's to kind of explore the landscape a little bit and determine what it is uh, is going to work for you and good for good on Jason and some of these other folks for sharing those success stories. I, I really, really want to uh, make this an environment where success stories are the norm. I really do. I really do. Because if, if we're putting all of these frameworks in place, if you're abiding by some of the rules that I put forward in some of my videos this week to deploy in the stock market, um, stand by this weekend. I'll probably roll out the second half of that video, which is the uh, don't do's in the stock market. I, I feel like it's things that people should avoid altogether. But for new investors that are tuning into that framework and they're actually getting the opportunity to sit across as a subscriber and say, man alive, that, that's really cool of this guy to come on and share some of his successes, as well as some of these other successes as well, man. It's legit. It really is. And, and I want it to be more commonplace. I really do. I, I don't know if the, the, the average Joe out there is used to thinking of themselves as being a successful person. And I, I would really love to attempt to break down a lot of those barriers that a lot of people have, and they, and they have it, okay? Trust me, that they have it. You're not going to sit here and tell me um, that the majority of people out there who are consumed by life are, are, are allowing themselves the opportunity to have positive thought and, and really allow themselves to mentally think and grow rich. And, and a lot of it is a mental mindset. You might not have piles of money someday. Hate to be blunt with you. You might not have that. However, if, if you're thinking uh, about success and wealth building and doing the right thing day to day, eventually you might be surprised at what you're able to generate as far as results. So good job, Jason. I really appreciate that, man. I've got Jaden Craig in the group who I've just taken the liberty of bouncing over and, and uh, subscribing to the channel. Um, I just hadn't had a chance. I do not cover all the YouTube channels um, that, that I probably should. I do not have time. I returned to work for the first time in a while today, and it actually felt pretty good, to be honest with you. I was well-rested and well-exercised up and uh, felt probably more productive than I've been in a long, long time. <laughs> had a nice, quiet office. It was nice. But uh Got Jaden Craig in here. He's a young, up-and-coming channel. Certainly want to put forward the endorsement for Jaden. He's doing a good job. Shot out to retire with options. Randy's made their made his way in here. I just see Brent, a financial investor, who's also in here. Been a long-standing uh, supporter of the Independent Investor Channel since the beginning of time, I might add. Uh, I've got Matt Money in the group as well, who popped in super, super early. Um, awesome. Always great to have Matt. What a great resource to have as part of this community. Really wouldn't be the same without Matt, no doubt. And I think a lot of you guys would agree with me on that. Matt Money is approaching. I don't know if he put out a post that said he was like four away from 6,000 or something. Bro, you can't claim that until you get that extra four subscribers. So if you didn't, if you need an extra four subscribers, please kick over there and subscribe to Matt Money so he can claim six thousand. Uh, I I think uh, someday we're all probably going to be laughing at these numbers, probably, and seeing you know what the next hundred thousand dollar or hundred thousand subscriber threshold should be because you know we're, we're all fairly unknown channels. Let, let's be real, uh, and uh, for the majority of people that need to be brought to this fine community. Um, we're at best scratching the surface. We really are. So um, if, if there's one piece of motivation for Matt and Jason and Hidden Freedom Investing and all these other channel creators out there, Gen X Dividend Investor, of course, always keep your eye down across the horizon, okay? Always 
we're striving toward the future and, and building a product on YouTube that quite frankly has unlimited upside potential. And, you know, an investment like that, that can slowly trudge forward. My channel specifically uh, ha has really kind of just trudged forward and has just gained one subscriber at a time. And it's right in line with what I've always said I wanted. And here it is slowly, I'm creating what it is that I, I, I might have always wanted. And we're, we're going to continue to evolve slowly uh, and methodically. And um, we'll, we'll be here for the long run. And, th and that's really the key is to make sure that people know um, that they've got a, a solid awareness message on the stock market. They're getting a perspective from me from the from the ground level. I mean, I'm in the trenches, guys. Um, you know, it, it takes 130000 or below to contribute to a Roth IRA. I make about half that, all right? And I'm making more money than I've ever made in my life right now. So um, I, I do relate with those folks out there that are maybe having to live on a budget. I put a pulse out through the community and asked who was renting and who was um, actually owning in real estate right now. Uh, David Oldenburg, who I've been conversing with over the last few weeks, has a town hall that's queued up for the 26th of this month. So I would encourage each and every one of you guys, if you could throw that in your queue. Um, David's been putting on a show like a KISS concert, and there's been like 10 people that are coming in to the live event. Now, he's getting more uh, views after the fact because the content is really, really solid. It's really, really good. So if you do have the time and the opportunity to kick over there, uh, I myself will be there because it's a topic that I'm actually very interested in. Uh, the rent versus buy thing. I have a very unique perspective on that and that I think a lot of people have a hard time uh, digressing, which is what I've done. I've owned two homes previously and now I'm, I'm currently renting and I'm glad that I am with the current market. I have my own pulse uh, on the stock market or the real estate buzz as I do with the stock market. So uh, the 26th, he's already queued up that video. So definitely want to continue to support David and his mission as well. And uh, we'll continue to support him in his endeavors and uh, as we look to grow uh, with him as part of this community as well. So uh, so David's in the group, Retire With Options, Lydia Santiago as well, Financial Foundations as well has made his way in here. Um, just appreciate everybody making their way in. I'm gonna bring Mr. Chris on to say hello to the group. You guys need to start thinking about who and what other guest may have the opportunity to come on. If I don't have another guest this evening, um, then I'll have the opportunity to engage directly with the audience, which I was half tempted to make this uh, a solo live stream because I do have an awful lot to talk about, which is fine. But I really, really do like the opportunity to have a subscriber like Chris come on and spend his time on the Independent Investor channel, man. And it's just the opportunity to hear a different perspective. And I'll go over and start uh, fishing through the feed and, and throwing some comments up here and getting folks even more recognition. So I'll bring Chris on now and and, and we can hear a little bit more about, what, uh, about Chris's story, guys. All right? All right, Chris. Thanks for doing this, man. Hey, Ron. How's everybody doing tonight? Hope everybody's doing good. Yeah, staying safe anyway, right? You know, yeah, I, I mean, today it felt like a step in the right direction as far as, you know, they're, they're talking about getting back to an, a, a new normal or kind of phasing in um, with the three phase approach. And it wasn't quite that busy on the road, but it was a little bit more busy than the times that I've went to work during this time where it was just empty, man. There's nobody on the road. All the businesses are closed. It's it's kind of eerie. And and. I think I can do without this, to be honest with you. I, I'm I'm ready to get back to to a little bit more normal. I've been ready for a while, to be honest with you, and I'm just being patient for all the right reasons, you know, to yeah. to try to help protect people and do the right thing. Uh, but how are you, Chris? Please, you know, introduce yourself and and talk this fine community, man. You know how awesome it is. And we were talking before the live stream. I just kind of like you to reiterate what you were telling me about how you kind of, you know. Got, got kicking in the stock market. It's kind of a cool story. Yeah, I'm pretty Jordan. Um, been in uh, this community for um, almost two years now, I guess. 
think that's what we figured out, Ryan. Uh, <laughs> you know, started yeah. around, uh, watching uh, towards the end of 2018. Um, I'm 33 years old. I'm actually here in Virginia Beach, uh, probably right around the corner from Ryan. You know, there's, we got this uh, joke that, you know, you can get anywhere in, in uh, Virginia Beach within like 15 minutes. Oh, I'll be there tomorrow. You come yeah, down there, man. I'll be there. I'll be there with my family. You come down there, man, for yeah, sure. So I'll be there. Probably, you're probably around the corner, man. Yeah, um, yep. But uh, other than that, man, I'm just, uh, so I'm 33, you know, been working, you know, since I was like 20, 21. And uh, like I was telling you earlier, uh, you know, one of my jobs that I had, uh, the, hey uh, Chris, can you turn the volume up a little bit on your on your uh, uh, on your mic? Uh, I don't think I have a way to do that. Are you using uh, your phone? Yeah. Hey, yeah these guys I, are saying turn it up a little bit. I can hear you fine. I've got the ears on, but uh, yeah, I don't have a way to turn it up, man. I'm yeah. Oh. Okay. I I can hear you fine. Um, I don't know how bad it is. So yeah, some some somebody says it's good. So okay. yeah, we'll we'll continue on. All right. But uh, so I had the the four one k in that in that in that one of those first jobs, and then like I was telling you, um, I think I ended up leaving that job, and then I ended up you know cast it out, and then um, you know in twenty eighteen I was really thinking about getting back into it, you know getting back into the start market and you know really taking things seriously, you know trying to really trying to take my you know my fantasy is uh, pretty seriously, and uh, like I was telling you, just trying to figure out what I really wanted to do, you know, at that time, you know, Robin Hood was out, you know, I had a buddy was like, you know, <laughs> yeah. telling me about Robin Hood and sending me a link and stuff. I'm just like, man, I don't know about Robin Hood, man, but I've been hearing about N1 Finance. So, been, you know, watching your, watching your channel, you know, got me to, you know, really decide to actually do that. So I started a N1 Finance uh, account, that, well, it was a, just a um, taxable account uh, in March of uh 2019 so i had a little over a year now and then i would i would rather see folks if they're going to opt for a taxable account i would rather see them go with a, an m1 finance product because i know it will keep folks a little bit disciplined because m1 finance is only conducive for the passive investor would you agree with that a little bit i just think robin hood's so easy to trade in and out and i think a lot of people are getting 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 surprised by their tax yeah. bill to say the yeah. least. Yeah. Um, so I had that and then, um, you know, really wanted to get that, you know, that, that Roth going, you know, so I was able to, you know, get through the year and then we was able to, uh, you know, actually use the uh, bonus from work to uh, actually fund the, uh, the Roth. So, you know, started, Good on that, you. started that at the end of the year. That's, 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 that's interesting. Uh, an interesting uh, 401k story. Uh, it's interesting. I don't know, you know, if you took that money and spent it or took a vacation or whatever, but th this particular, uh, the spouse had actually had a 401k at the previous job. And uh, she was like, yeah, I, I remember having a 401k, this and that. I contributed a lot of money to it, but I haven't checked it for a long, long time. Went back. This was like years Right. So that's why I asked you, did, did it get rolled over? Did it get put to good use? Did you liquidate it? You know, something. Right. And she went back and looked at it and she she found that there was fifty six thousand dollars in the account. So oh. she, she thought there was six. Wow. Yeah. So just like I, I, to me. I know where every penny of my money is. So <laughs> it's just when I hear stuff like that, it's like it's kind of cool in a way that people can separate from their money that much. Um, I am not that way. I, I'm really not. I want to make sure that every single penny is maximized to the T. And, um, but, uh, well, it, you know, it's good that you ended up starting. Who did you start the Roth IRA with? If you don't mind me asking what broker in one finance. Okay. So you opened two accounts then. Yeah. Okay. And how's your experience been with M1 so far? I actually like it. Um, with me, the way about the way I work, it actually uh, with the way my I'm so busy at work, actually uh, running around and stuff, uh, doing a bunch of different things. So having a mobile app is uh, really really helpful. I think their mobile app is solid. It's very simple, very clean. It's fun. Yeah. You know, 
Yeah. And it makes it makes investing, at least from a monitoring perspective, if I need to check it on the go, I will. Right. Uh, and and now I can monitor the account on the go. I, I don't do any maneuvering on M1 Finance. I haven't touched my accounts since I started them. I have two taxables with them. And I all I do is fund it. That's it. I, I don't I don't trade. I haven't sold one stock. I have not rebalanced one time. I just let it sit there. And I think if there's a takeaway for the group that also deals with M1 Finance, maybe a little bit more actively than I do, I take a page out of my playbook. I, I think you should just set it and forget it, honestly. Yeah. So man, that's really cool. I, at 33 years old, man, I started self-directed investing at 34. Okay. So, you know, at 33 years old, it was kind of, kind of, kind of cool. You had mentioned to me, you know, I was young, so I can make, you know, maybe I, maybe I screwed up or whatever. Right. Right. I don't know, man. 33 is super young, especially to be brought to a message like this and a community like this, where you've got all kinds of support. Um, what's the, what's your investing style? Are you more an ETF index fund investor or do you have single stock? How on that? Uh, it's, it's kind of a kind of a mix. Actually, in, in both the uh, accounts, is is a mix. Is it like a 50-50 mix, or or? Uh, it, it could be. It probably is. Yeah. 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 So you like a little bit the benefits of both having some right. good quality, yeah, yeah, dividend stocks in there. Nice, nice. It it kind of. It's kind of cool hearing your story tonight, man, because it goes hand in hand with the videos that I released this week and the one that I'm going to release tomorrow um, for the do's and don'ts in the stock market and how to succeed. Because you're kind of talking to the audience from a perspective of somebody who's already deployed and put capital to work. Everything that I released this week was like the, the deliberation leading up to the decision that you've already made. So right. it, it's it's one of those conversations that I want to constantly revolve around and, and make sure people understand, look, from start to finish, it, it's achievable because right. I, I, it just it baffles me how many people have such a barrier to entry to investing. I just I did for, I did for a long time. I mean, that's what I'm saying, man. I, uh, it took why? Me, it, I was just I don't know, man. I was just, just worried about, you know. I wanted something in a good, you know, a good platform that I could use, um, and then make sure I wanted to, at this point in time, you know, wanted to, knowing that I wanted to do it for the long haul, you know, yeah. wanted to make sure I wanted to, it was in, it, I would make sure I was in a good platform, and then understand, you know, what I was, you know, doing, you know, so I could basically, you know, get set up and then just, you know, forget it and just fund it. So, nice. and, like, and like right now, you know, I think my allocation is pretty much where I want it to be. And now I can just, just fund it. That's all you got to do. Yeah. People think you got to work really, really hard setting it up and then work really, really hard the rest of your life. And it, it like, it's the opposite of that. If you're doing it right, you're at a place where Gen X dividend investor is right now. That's the pinnacle of where you want to be as an investor. Matt's probably approaching that level, but he's not there. He would agree with me. He's he's not where he wants to be as far as making that that completely passive, completely where the assets are funding his lifestyle, you know, and, and, and that's the ultimate goal. And, and I think for a lot of people, let's say 100 people aren't going to realize that dream of having their assets just pay for their lifestyle. But I tell you what, man, those folks that don't invest, they're foregoing the potential of having their investments at least maybe supplement their lifestyle. Like, I don't understand why so many people invest to just shoot for the moon all the time. You know, I, I want a million dollars or or, le or or nothing. So therefore, I can't get there or I don't know enough about investing. So I'm not even going to start. I, I just don't get that. And, and even for somebody, Chris, 33, man, that's young. That's yeah, young. I, mean, I, I even had a, um, you know, it was a fellow coworker. He's a buddy, and he's like, you know, his parents invested. And, uh, um, I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah, they, they, you know, dad, you know, dad was the main one that was, you know, you know, definitely in those accounts, you know, managing them. Well, yeah, yeah, I mean, he had brokers and stuff, but uh, but you know, he's like, man, I, I don't, I don't see the point, man. Like, you know, my dad, you know, 
he lost money. You know, I just don't see the point. Lost money. Yeah, he's like he just doesn't. He just doesn't think that he's gonna you know be able to get a return. You know. But. Oh man, <laughs> it's like I don't know, man. This is what I talk about. The stock market will give you any excuse to pull out if that's what you want to do. If you have it set up in your mind that you're not going to embrace the investing opportunity until you're at that point, don't invest, right. don't invest, save. And a lot of those people, man, they're in they're If you have trouble with credit cards, okay, you shouldn't invest. Okay. But that's just the start. And that's a lot of people, especially in this country, because we're a debt laden society. I could talk for hours on that, but I won't. But for the people who have the debt under control, a lot of people miss the next criteria that I insist upon, and that's the ability to save money. Freaking save right. money. Yeah. You, you mean to tell me you can't take $100 and put it into a savings account? As dumb as that sounds, most people can't do that. And if you can't do those two things, in my opinion, you're ineligible to even start investing because you're going to look at the stock market and you're going to look at those two deficiencies that you have all the time. And you're going to be like, wow, I could have done this with this money. I could have paid down my debt. Oh my goodness. I don't have any savings account because I'm investing too much. And it's always going to be this back and forth wishy-washy because you just don't have control over your money. It in fact has control over you. And I think that's really, really unfortunate, man. I, I really do. Um, yeah, I mean, that's it's interesting. It's kind of why I do the channel because that approach to money and wealth building and having control over at least this aspect of your life has always intrigued me uh, enough, obviously, to start a YouTube channel. And, and I think there's few out there that are motivated. And Chris, I just, I really want to thank you, man. It means a lot to me for you to take your time and come on and, and say, hey, I've been following the channel for a couple of years and you're, you're on your way. I mean, you're set up really nice. And I, I think whether or not you would have been where you are now without maybe the message, you know, if there was a small bit of encouragement to say, hey, you know, Ryan was doing it this way. I caught this idea about him on finance. Hey, you know, I looked at it myself and I was happy with it. And that's what it's all about. It really is. I think it's pretty cool. So kind of a powerful thing because, you know, even though we, we come from the same town, the chances of us meeting on the street and getting to start talking about uh, finances is like the chances are zero. Right. right. You know, but uh, anyway, my man, thank you so much, Chris. I know you just wanted to come on for 10, 15 minutes or so, but uh, yeah. uh, I'll be down on the sand tomorrow, if, man, if you want to catch me for sure. I'll be under my umbrella. I'll be under my umbrella. I don't know if I'm going to be swimming. I guess it's like ice water out there, man. But uh, you're, you're going just, down there, huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. I'm a beach bum, man. I, I love it. I love life, man. I love life. I love it, man. It's cool to connect with you tonight, Chris. Thank you so definitely, much definitely. for sharing, man. I appreciate I'll it. I'll appreciate be well. It, be well, my man. All right. Thank you. Later. So I always enjoy it when subscribers come onto the channel and kind of share how long they've been with the channel and, and maybe they've picked up a few things, uh, maybe a few ideas on the channel um, when they come on. And uh, I'm, I'm always really humbled because without that opportunity through the live stream, uh, I've got to converse with the subscriber base uh, via comment section of the videos. All right. And that has somewhat of a one dimensional aspect to it. And so if, if I can share this opportunity to come on and, and, and say, hey, Ryan, thanks. You know, here's what I got from you. And here's maybe a couple of things that I don't agree with you. You know, I do things a little different than you do. I'm starting out on this journey, but I do like your uh, your opportunities that you pursue, maybe with some swing training activity. I don't know. You know, maybe, hey, you brought me into this community and you were able to introduce me to somebody like a GW Life TV investing retirement life. So Jerry's in the group, man. So Jerry gets a shot out, too, and he almost got it within the first half hour. So thanks, uh, Jerry, for making your way on. Very, very cool. It's great to see you. I'm going to throw another invite just in case uh, any one of you guys are, are feeling um, brave 
I, I don't know what that means because it's just a live stream with me. It's not really that big of a deal, but it, it, it sure is fun, man. It's pretty cool. I really enjoy that opportunity. So there it is. If any of you guys have something that you think would be beneficial for the group, I, I encourage you, man, kick on here with me and, and, and we'll try to fill this two hour live stream um, with some with some prudent information for sure. But uh, uh, I know Lydia's popped on for the first time in a while. I, I know she was involved with some uh, some real estate endeavor as well. Um, and, and it just kind of goes back. Jaden, I see you there. If you want to get set up, man, I'll bring you on here in a second. <clears throat> I just think it goes to my comment and insistence upon always looking to surround yourself with successful people. And I get it. Okay. A, a lot of people might think that that's somewhat arrogant. I don't, I don't. All right. That there, there's a reason why people come in and, and maybe for different reasons. I don't know. I, I think all good probably takes a spiritual approach to this whole thing. And, and I just think she looks at every, each and every one of us as our children, as her children. I mean, honestly, um, because she's that spiritually strong and there is absolutely a lot more to this gig than just investing. Um, I, you know, I could come on here and talk about all my stock moves this week. The pulse of the market right now, I'm, I'm, I'm being a little bit hesitant, uh, a little bit careful. I'm not hesitant. Uh, if I see an opportunity, I'll take it down. But um, I, I think we've run uh, fairly quickly. I, I think there was some tools taken off of the table this week uh, by uh, Chairman Powell when he talked about the um, not going to negative interest rates. So I don't know if that posture has has resurfaced. I, I sure hope we do not do that. That's just my opinion. Um, I would like to see the strength or the weakness in the economy um, sift out naturally. I really would. I, I think we've been uh, I think we've had enough uh, stimulus. So uh, I'd really like and think that this market could probably benefit from time. I think time is probably the best remedy. And um, I think there's a, a lot of rhetoric going on right now with regard to what is the expectation of the stock market going forward. Uh, and um, there was some of that this week. I thought it was an extremely negative week. I really did. I was very, very disappointed um, in some of the in some of the behavior. And they're going to say what they're going to say. It's not necessarily the people who offer their commentary about where they think the stock market's going to go. What gets me somewhat uh, disappointed and makes me sometimes just want to just throw in the towel, you know, and I, I'm speaking I'm speaking tongue in cheek. I'm speaking from a third party perspective. What I mean by that is how the heck is a new in investor supposed to tune into media outlets and all they hear is negative? And I find it interesting that the further down the market goes, the, the more negative people get. When if you just stop and think about it for two seconds, it should be the opposite of what you should absolutely do. So as a self-directed investor, as the as the rhetoric starts to ramp up and the negativity starts to ramp up, that's actually the time when you should be looking at maybe putting some capital to work. And I, I, I test this, okay? When, when we eventually reach all-time highs again in the stock market, tell me I'm wrong and tell me how much negativity is going through the market. It'll be like a, a dim silence. There will be nobody talking about it. And that right there is the very time when you need to be kind of like looking at your portfolio, maybe trimming some profits, maybe rendering some profits, doing that type of thing, right? So I just find it interesting and ironic how counterproductive the rhetoric is uh, for a lot of beginning investors. And I'm going to sit here and tell you that the, 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 the right answer, the guarantee on how to deal with the stock market over the last two months has been to do nothing freaking nothing the, the the tried and true tested you would have ridden it all the way down you may have not liked it maybe you maybe you did i don't know but if you did nothing that was probably the best thing that you could have ever done now if you have the discipline to set that as your baseline for your discipline 
and and you have the ability to not only write it down but be neutral on your emotion and then and then look at those strategic injection points you'd be better off for it um that's what i did and that that's some of the pulse that i think i i can provide from week to week on the live stream i know you guys are always interested to know i i do pay attention to the market but i was really disappointed this week um it, it almost seems like i and i and i do have some level of acknowledgement to this um, current crisis that we're going through, but when when is it enough? When is it enough? I will throw that out there rhetorically. Um, I've been locked in my house for two months. I, I'm fairly certain that a 14 day uh, quarantine I've done four times over. Uh, so hopefully my small contribution to society uh, doesn't go overlooked, but I've had about enough and I, I'm, I'm really ready um, to do what it is that was promised of me. And that is to put a plan in place. So at least we don't speculate on what may happen. Yeah, we, we may have some hot spots. We may, but the whole idea was to soften and flatten a, a potential curve, right? And, and now all of a sudden, everybody jumped on this bandwagon this week of, of having a vaccine or nothing. And, and I, I just, I don't understand when the rug got pulled out from under us and we were told one thing and the expectation uh, was such to uh, relax some of the burden on the healthcare industry. And, and all of a sudden now we're putting these pharmaceutical companies to the test. And I, I actually do believe we will have something before the end of the year. Um, but um, I'm really not one of those folks that jump on the testing bandwagon. Um, I, I, I always am interested to know those people that do think that that's the end all be all solution for this world. Um, because I ask a follow on question, well, what do you do then? What do you do then? Okay. You, you have this information or maybe something tests negative and maybe the next day they're exposed. Then where, where are you? Didn't think that through very, very good. Did you? All right. So uh, for the community that's made their way into the live stream tonight, certainly I, I bid you guys all the health and, and, and well-being. Certainly, I, I hope each and every one of you are staying safe out there. Um, but um, get back to the stock discussion. Certainly, I'm going to bring Mr. Jaden on, uh, who, who I had on a few weeks ago and, and uh, was proud to do so. Jaden's awesome, man. Very sharp and uh, love to hear his perspective as well. And I'm going to kind of jump into the uh, thread here and allow Jaden to update us on his uh, channel progress as well. He's over 500 subscribers. So I, I was like, holy moly, man, this guy's this guy's going viral, man. It's pretty legit. So uh, I'm going to bring him on right now and, and hopefully everything is good with the audio. I didn't get a chance to test it with Jaden. Can you hear me? OK. Yeah, I can hear you great. Can you hear me? Oh, yeah, I got you loud and clear, man, yeah. for sure. How are you, man? Great to see you. Yeah, it's good to see you too, Ryan. I'm doing great. How are you? <laughs> Super good, man. I, I clicked over. Is that right? You've got over 500 subscribers? Yeah, I think I'm at like 540 right 40? now. So I'm yeah. definitely not going viral like he said. Oh, uh, <laughs> Dude, you, you, you just reminded me when I had less than a thousand, you count every one. Now, now yeah. I look at it and I'm just like, okay, how many do we get? We get a thousand last month or something. It, it'll, it'll, it'll do that for you. It really will. It's, it's a fun thing building a YouTube channel. It really is. Um, I hope it stays fun for you. Um, I, I'm quite certain that you're influencing people. That's why I said what I meant last time I met you, you know, so uh, have you had any interesting interactions yet? See, everybody loves you now, Jaden. Everybody loves you. <laughs> um, yeah, so far, everything's been really good. Everyone's super supportive and nice. I mean, really, I haven't really had like any negative feedback, which has been awesome. Um, I'm sure eventually that will come, but it won't really phase me too much because, I mean, haters going to hate, you know? So, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's been going really well so far. I mean, the progress is not like super crazy fast, but I don't really expect it to be that way. I mean, I'm mainly just here so I can talk about yeah. finance and investing because that's what I like to do. And I have yes, plenty to continue talking about it. And I don't care if I have to keep making videos for years and years to come before I even like really have a big community or anything. So yeah, I mean, well, I'm here to talk about what I like to talk about. 
Well, coming on my channel, um, it helps. It helps introduce uh, to hopefully some new folks make their way into the live stream tonight, as well as when when we post it, the live streams get pretty good exposure. I've got some pretty good exposure in in UK as well. I've got a lot of folks that admit to me they just put it up and have their coffee, you know, like a podcast and, and listen. So um, yeah. anything we can do to help you, but. T tell us, tell us what your thoughts are, man. I'd love to hear your your insight and pulse on what you're seeing right now. Yeah. Um, go so, ahead, man. For the people that don't know, I recently made the transition from Robinhood over to M1 Finance, and thanks, J Mac. But the main reason I'm switching over to M1 Finance is, I mean, the the like my channel name is Investing Made Simple, so I really just want investing to be as simple as it can be. And I really think the more simple you make it, kind of the more successful you become at it. Because I think it's the people that overcomplicate it that kind of we're always in and out of trades and stuff that kind of don't really do well in the market. Yeah. Um, which in M1 Finance has been great so far. I love M1 Finance. I love that I can just make my portfolio, choose my stocks, my investments, and just put money in there and does all the work for me. So it's been super nice. Um, and with the whole market stuff going on right now, like you said, there's a lot of bad news going around right now. Um, I guess I mainly just focus on companies that I feel comfortable holding, like until I die, honestly, like these are companies that I see lots of value in that I don't see them going anywhere. And so me investing in these companies and like having these companies in my portfolio right now, like I don't really feel like nervous or scared about them. Like I don't feel too worried about my investments because I plan on investing in them for the long term. Um, so, yeah, what's, your top, what's your top five, Jaden? Um, top five. I have a pretty balanced portfolio, but I think it's like Amazon, MMM, or 3M, whatever you want to call it. Um, I got sure. Coca-Cola in there. Um, Procter & Gamble is a really great one. And I mean, I have, if you go to any of my videos, I have my whole M1 Finance portfolio in my description. You can check it out whenever. Um, but I also have some bonds in my portfolio as well. Um, I know oh. like a lot of people aren't like huge on bonds, but I like to have some bonds just to kind of hedge against risk in my portfolio. So yeah, got a little bit of everything, but wow. yeah. That's kind of surprising. You're you're yeah. like ultra young, right? Yeah, I'm 23, so I guess you could okay. Say so you have one of those like 80 year time horizons. Like your compounding calculator puts you at like 20 million when you retire. So yeah, yeah. Like 80 years old. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome, man. Yeah. Well, I, I mean that's that's pretty cool. Um, the channel's growing pretty quick, man. So yeah. good on you, and it looks really good too. I thought the channel art was really good. Yeah, um, thumbnails and stuff. It's been slow and yeah. steady. I mean, it's definitely picking up traction as of lately. I think it's just a big part of that's just been being consistent and just posting two to three times a week. Before, when I first got started, I was maybe, oh, hold on, hold fast. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you were saying, okay. Yeah, at first I was posting like maybe once a week, and I think me not being consistent at the beginning was just what's causing my slowness. But yeah, it's been picking up now that I'm more consistent. And yeah, I just posted a top five Vanguard ETFs video. So anyone looking for some good ETFs can check that out. What was the top ETF? Man? What was your um, base I, there? The video was on the top performing Vanguard ETF. So the top performing Vanguard ETF for the last 10 years was the, I think it's V, what is it? It's the Vanguard in, or Information Technology ETF. I forgot what the favorite symbol is. Yeah, so mine's in terms up, of mine's up, it's up 63% right now. Yeah, I just I own it. Yeah, over the last 10 years, it's averaged like almost 17% every single year, which is insane. Yeah, it's it's insane. I you just I, I cringe a little bit, and I know Jason had touched on this. He did a really good comparison between um uh the Vanguard's technology and then uh the triple Q's as well, which really isn't an apples and apples comparison. He said that as well, and then as well as one of the other technology uh ETFs, which was kind of an apples and apples comparison. And you saw that in the numbers that he disclosed. But your technology, man, is is it's my favorite sector. It always has been. And that's indicative of my spider portfolio, right? I weight that to have that tech uh, tech sector uh, a little heavily weighted, 14% in that. Mm -hmm. But I, I want to make sure and encourage people that if they're looking to invest in tech, see, there was a rotation out of tech today, okay? And I don't mean to scare anybody, but sector rotations are real. So if you if you think that you're just going to outsmart the market and just go technology the rest of your life, 
you may be setting yourself up for some disappointment. I mean, Google's got an antitrust coming their way now. Um, they messed with the wrong administration. Uh, I don't mean any political anything there, but their influence in D.C. is heavy, right? Um, so we'll see how that shakes out. I was surprised it was Google and not Facebook, to be mm -hmm. honest. Um, I love both companies. I think both companies are phenomenal. They, they are buys across the board as far as I'm concerned. But, um, you know, if they get whacked, the, the tech quality high end, Apple, Microsoft, they may suffer a little bit too. Um, and then as well as some of the old tech hopefully can pick up. But man alive, I, I just... Intel, I've had really, really good success with. IBM, not so much. And Cisco just uh, reported a very nice quarter, too. So Cisco being my absolute favorite out of them, I just, well, a well-rounded, very well-sustained company. They're going to have to go through a transformation like Microsoft did if they're going to accelerate and kind of rewrite who they are as a company. Um, and, and hopefully they do that. And I believe that they are. I think Chuck Robbins, does, he does a really good job. He's a great CEO. He's been at the helm for a long time. But, um, you know, I, I agree with you. I would just caution people, you know, on the sector specific exposure. That's why I just buy them all. That way, if it rotates, I carry at least one of the 11, you know, that can benefit from. So that's kind of what I mentioned towards the end of my video is that like sectors kind of come and go like they have good decades and bad decades. So just because mm -hmm. information technology sector had a great decade doesn't mean it's going to continue to be that way, even though I think it will because technology is going to continue to grow, like you said. But yeah, different sectors can come and go. Like for all we know, energy could have a great decade this upcoming decade. Um, so, yeah, you never know. And I think that's like you said, it's very important to be diversified for that reason. Well, the temptation to rotate, you know, because I thought that technology, most of the other technology sector specific ETFs, they return about 10% a year on average. Mm -hmm. I, you might be right if you looked at it more recently than I did, because I think this, I'm up 63% since I bought it. It's up huge it, it, because tech's been on it just on fire. It's just been on fire, you know, but um 17 seems a little high to me. If you looked at it, I, I, I defer to what you looked at there. Mm -hmm. But um, it, yeah, it's tough because you get that outperformance in a sector and then the hedge funds want to rotate and they're taking big swaths of money and they're going to be putting it into those underperforming sectors that they're kind of taking a strategic bet that are going to pick up. And, and there's a few of them right now, um, you know, I, financials is just absolutely in a bloodbath right now. Um, you know, energy, if I was just going to give my pulse, I think is coming out of the other side. Yeah. Hopefully good grief. But those two sectors, you know, and there's, there's still some really good quality in energy. And I guess to my detriment, energy is one of, one of those sectors that I enjoy investing in. Um, I, I really do. I, I, I like the quality. I like the big names. I think it's a misunderstood sector. A lot of the times, you know, you think oil and you think Exxon. Well, that's not necessarily true. Yeah. They, they, there's 2000 chemicals out there that people don't think is part of their portfolio. And quite frankly, that's where the money is. You know, um, the 15 divisions of crude oil, we need those too. We need jet fuel. We, we need all the products that come from the raw crude. But I think sometimes it gets misinterpreted a little bit about how quality of a business ExxonMobil is. And Chevron is probably a better buy right here than Exxon. So, but, um, you know, nonetheless, it'll be, it'll be great to see, yeah. hopefully to get a little bit of return. I, yeah, God, you know, and you hold these sectors like technology and you're like, geez, Louise, it, it's, it's carrying my portfolio, but how long can this withstand, mm -hmm. you know? Um, industrials got kind of crushed this week. RTX was really, really uh, disappointing this week. Caterpillar, you know, approaching a hundred. So, you know, if some of these strategic positions can work for you, I, I think industrials look, look interesting here, but you're, you're just buying into the teeth of, of the problem, <laughs> you know, and Hey, you know, sometimes that can really pay off big. If you're really looking to just say, you know what? Do I think cruise ships are going to be around five years from now? I don't know. I ask that rhetorically. I don't ask that to say you need to invest in cruise on Monday. I don't, I don't, that's not my point. Um, my point is there are bookings that are coming in next year, 2021 for cruises. Yeah. They're filling up right now. And uh, yeah, the prices are so cheap right now. <laughs> I know, man. Well, if you understand a little bit about how cult 
cruise community is like those people love cruises oh, yeah. for, for a guy like myself, I had to go on one to kind of learn the business a little bit. And that's all I'll say about that side of the house. But <laughs> as far as going for entertainment on a cruise ship, when I've done as much sailing as I have in my life, I'm good. I'm good. I, I would rather go to the Caribbean and just sit on a beach for two weeks straight um, instead of just cruising. Cause those cruisers, man, they come in and they're in for like a few hours and they've got like three hours of leave time and boom, they're rushing back to the boat. And I'm like, no, nah, no, nah, I'm good. I'm good. Thanks. <laughs> but I don't know. I, um, what, what, what are your long-term goals, Jaden? You know, as far as your investing, I mean, you've obviously taken your well, ahead of your peers. That's for sure. And I would contend that you're probably ahead of a lot of folks that are in their thirties and, and even my age too, that, that don't even know what investing is. Oh. Yeah, I'd love to talk about that. Um, I just feel like that's the reason I got into investing at such a young age it is like I started college and I just thought about like working for someone else for the rest of my life. And like, I look up to Gen X investor and what he's been able to accomplish and people like that. I think it's so cool how these people are able to live frugally, save up money and eventually just be able to live off their investments. And I think that's a cool uh, thing ever honestly. He, he, he might be laughing a little bit when you said <laughs> live frugally. Sorry, Gen X. Sorry, <laughs> Gen X. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, yeah. long term goals. Um, so my wife and I actually, this is my next video, but we actually just paid off all of our debt this week, which was a uh, oh, way man. for us. We had like, we've been married for a little over a year. Um, when we first got married, the only debt we had was my car, which was like 10 grand. Um, but then two months into our marriage, her car broke down, which was paid off. So then we had to go buy her a new car because the transmission was completely broken. And the price yeah. to fix the transmission on her car would have been more than like the entire car's worth. Yes. Um, yeah, we bought her a new car. So now we both drive 2012 Honda Civics. <laughs> so Honda crew. Um, nice. But nice. yeah, so we had like 20 grand in debt last year at this time. Um, and we currently live in like a basement wow. apartment, just kind of paying rent every month. But I mean, we wanted to pay off our cars first before we even like thought about saving up for a home. Um, just because to us, like the idea of being debt free just kind of took a huge stress off our shoulders and would make it a lot easier for us to do other things. Um, so yeah, this was a huge accomplishment. We're super happy about it. And we don't really ever plan on going into more debt besides like a mortgage down the road. Um, but whenever we have to buy a new car again, we plan on just saving up for it in cash and paying for it in full and just trying to avoid debt, really. Um, yeah, so long-term goals, definitely we want to get a, our own place eventually. We don't want to live in this person's basement apartment forever. No offense to the person that owns this house. But, I mean, yeah, we just yeah. want our own place to raise our family and stuff. Um, yeah. And then just I want to keep making YouTube videos. Like, I really like talking about finance. I really like talking about investing and kind of helping other people to know that it doesn't have to be, like, hard or complicated to get – started investing and living frugally and saving money. Um, so I hopefully can make a career out of that. I mean, that would be the main goal or dream of mine one day, just to make a goal out of talking about this because this is what I love to do. So yeah, that's kind of like my long-term goals, um, kind of financially, I guess you could say, but yeah. I just think the debt piece is huge because I don't know, for every person that you know admits to having debt, I'm one of them. It yeah. used to be there. Um, and but not the worst kind of debt, but pretty bad, you know, in hock with the IRS, not once, but twice I was in my life. And um, so when I come on and I talk about the importance of debt, it's coming from a very, very real place it really is. And I think you, you said something that was really interesting. I caught that you, the feeling that you get when you pay that off and you don't feel so restricted and you don't have that anchor tied around your, your leg all the time. And it just, it, it restricts everything that you do. And I don't know if you're old enough to have it uh, reflected in your credit score, but, but as you, as you start to carry on those good habits, you know, you're going to want to keep some level of credit. Right. Yeah. And, and I'm not telling you to open a credit. You know, this, no, yeah. you you gotta, you gotta it. Establish it. if you need to pay it, if you need to pay it, see, he's back. He didn't know we were, we were talking about it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> he said, he, "Hey, Jaden said you were frugal. He said you were frugal, Gen X. <laughs> he's learned everything he needed to learn from you, man, about how not to how to save money and yeah. <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure he got started somewhere, right? <laughs> For real. 
Now, you know, well, I, I think <clears throat> I think it's something that I try to put in a box a little bit when you might pick up habits from one person or another and, you know, maybe discredit and say, hey, maybe this isn't good for me. Um, but me and Gen X have talked actually, and, and he's like, well, I, I wish I would have been smarter about the cars, girls and thing, you know, things that um, when you're younger, it's, it's hard to relate with that kind of stuff. Um, but, uh, you know, he, he's, I, I don't want to imply that I know, but it, it's seemingly that there was some success there in business, right? That, that, uh, you know, if, if you started dollar cost averaging with a thousand dollars and now you have a $1.5 million portfolio, um, I will be the first to congratulate you, but keep it in context, right? It, I think the best investment that you can make in yourself is your employment. I, I really do whether it be starting a business which is risky and i have my own reservations about that but you know getting that college degree and pursuing that that professional backbone um, which he has a professional backbone like jmac has a professional backbone a lot of these folks in this community they don't do youtube for a living yeah. and that's why it's kind of a cool and unique thing that we all kind of come on here and share our stories about what's worked for us and and, and what hasn't but um I think I always try to focus on the level of separation between where you started and where you are now and how much of that is actually invested appreciation. Does that make sense? Yeah. You know? Yeah. So. Yeah. And I agree. Like, so I'm actually going to school part time right now um, to become a personal a financial planner. Um, wow. so, I won't have to put like the disclaimer at the bottom of my video saying like I'm not a financial advisor because then I will be. No. <laughs> no. no, so you're going full CFP. Is that what you're yeah. going for? Yeah, that's the plan. I am like two years in, so I'm like halfway there, but hopefully I can get it finished up in the next two to three years. Yeah, you'll just grab a finance degree. Is that correct? And then take your series so, seven and series six. Yeah, degree is actually called personal financial planning, so it's like PFP. Um, okay. So the university I go to actually offers just personal financial planning. Um, you can do finance as well, but I guess personal finance is more what I'm looking for, I guess. It's more of my interest. So, yeah. Great great show says you're nice. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you never know what you're going to get with a live stream, man. Never know what you're going to get. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah. Well, you said you're married. I mean, does your spouse, do, do you guys see eye to eye a little bit? I touched on this a little bit this week about, you know, having a, having a life partner and, you know, making those decisions together. And I, I've seen some crazy stuff, Jaden, about yin and yang yeah. or just complete opposing forces like oil and water. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm not saying one is better than the other. No, no, I'm not saying that the oil and water didn't make it work. But man, it was interesting. I'm just sitting back and I'm like, how in the heck do you do this? One is like a straight arrow, you know, a professional. I think she was an attorney. And, and the husband was just a couch potato, spent all the money, was just completely irresponsible, debt, and they got along. Hmm. Yeah. Like, I, I used that to would apply in my household. <laughs> so I used to listen to the Dave Ramsey show all the time. And he said that that's like the most common call he gets is like how can i get my spouse on board to like try to achieve financial freedom with me and stuff like that um so yeah i think my wife personally she's been great she's totally on board with everything like i haven't like my goals and everything like that um she likes to live frugally as well she has the bigger goal in mind as well that like we eventually want our own house and like our we like to invest money so eventually we can live off those investments and stuff like that so yeah she's definitely on board she's not like a super huge spender i actually have to like go buy her gift cards and stuff. So she will go treat herself every once in a while um, to like get some new clothes and stuff. But yeah, she's definitely on board and that makes a huge difference because we're never like fighting over money. We're never like arguing about what we're going to spend money on. We have like the same goal and the same mindset. And it's honestly nice because, I mean, you hear all the time that like money is kind of like, I don't know if this is a real stat or not, but they say it's like the number one reason for divorce um, and yeah. stuff like that. Um, and so just, being able to have someone that's on the same page makes a huge difference. She's actually at work right now. She's a full-time photographer. Um, she does like family photography and stuff. So she actually is working right now. So yeah, she's a very hard worker, very grateful for her. That makes a huge difference for sure. Sounds like it. And I think you guys are probably getting a head start on your foundation. You know, I think at 23, I was doing a lot more screwing up than I was succeeding. <laughs> so as you guys come into your career full circle, 
you, you may have a little bit of a nice baseline built up and then you're going to be able to expand upon that program and accelerate it even further. So that's the exciting part for you is yeah. that you're kind of setting yourself up now for decisions down the line to look back and say, man, I'm glad I did that. You know, I, I got it pretty close to right too, because I know some of the investments that you're working with, mm -hmm. they're good. They're quite good. Like there's <laughs> no better, right? So, you, you know, you know what I mean? You might as well just trip and fall into quality. Good grief. <laughs> And, yeah. and that's why we spend the majority of our time talking about stuff like that. And, you know, when the, when the draft kings of the world are thrown out there, we, we, we get some entertainment out of it. J-Mac investing, you know, um, and, and it's just fun from an awareness perspective uh, to, to, to talk about what's available out there. But I think it's cool to think and hear from you because I've been married now 15 years. And when we started, we started the same way as as the way that you're explaining. Um, we, we didn't, we didn't have money. And I, I think looking back over those times, I wouldn't have changed a thing because you'll, you'll grow together. You know, for example, if you guys were provided some sort of head start, some sort of manufactured start, you may have a little bit of trouble really, uh, appreciating what it is that you guys are going to grow together going forward. If that, if that makes any sense. And that's right from my own personal playbook. Um, I, I wouldn't change a thing, man. I wouldn't, I don't know. So. I agree hundred percent. Yeah, it's been, I'm sure you can agree, but having someone on board with you kind of as a spouse or partner makes a huge difference, definitely. Um, but yeah. Well, does she, does she invest too? So I, I kind of just do all the oh, investing in family. <laughs> um, so she doesn't invest. I mean, I talk about it enough that she knows like a lot about stocks and stuff because she's here. Okay. Out all the time what happens when what happens when you surpass the independent investor channel and you've got like twenty five thousand subscribers and she's married to a youtube superstar is it going to change your my mindset a little bit see my wife didn't know much about investing and it was kind of like i was so into it and i always just looked at it like look i'm gonna i'm gonna force feed this until you become a believer yeah. And, and, and some might look at that as rude or, or I want it's it's like I believe so wholeheartedly that it's something that you have to do. And it's something you have to do as of yesterday mm -hmm. that make no mistake. She's a believer now. Right. And and sometimes it, it takes that like you can look at it as coaching, encouragement and hey, it's OK. And, um, you know, here's our plan and, and here's how kind of careful I am with the assets that we, that we enter into. And we do everything 50, 50 Jaden, you know? So what I do, I do the same for, for that other account too. Do you have like separate portfolios like you and your wife? Well? Oh, that's, a good, that's a good question. Um, so the individuals Roths, right. Uh -huh. Those speak for themselves. Those are individual. Um, I invest in the one for her. Uh, you know, so they're linked to a certain, certain aspect, right? Not to the extent of, of uh, power of attorney or any of that, which you can do, which not, not, I'm not that interested in that. Yeah. Um, I have access to and visibility on, and I do the investments in, and that's good enough. But at the end of the day, her name is on an individual Roth account, just like anybody else. Um, and then everything else, um, the joint brokerage account is together and then all the taxable accounts are together. Awesome. So, so you know, um, I just look at everything as we joke and it's like, you know, you can pay for dinner one of these times down the line, or you can pay for a, the vacation yeah. or <laughs> whatever. I, I go beyond that, to be honest with you. And I've said it many times and I freaking believe it. I, I, the way I am with money is I, I don't care. If it just so happens to be X number of dollars down the line and I get and I'm able to render X security from that investment, then I'm happy. Right. So so I don't have a fixed goal. If you know what I mean, I'm, I'm just trying to do everything I can possibly do to initiate the plan that makes sense to me and, and what that renders down the line. Great. It's some of the big swaths of of. Um, plan building that I insist upon, right, is the fee reduction and the tax piece. So those two pieces right there, if you if you acknowledge how important that is, you're you're going to win in the long run. And uh, I, I think that's that's really important for people to uh, to get with. Um, 
as as soon as they can. I think it's super important. You're already a winner. <laughs> Thanks, Ryan. Well, I just want to say thank you to you for all your advice and awesome. You just have such a great community, like the people in the chats and everything. Everyone's so positive and I just love it. Like there's no negativity whatsoever. So yeah, thank you to you and everyone in this community for being so kind and helpful and all the other investors and YouTube channels out there that are also awesome and fun to learn from. So you guys are all great. If you're catching the live stream after the fact and you want to help uh, support Jaden, please kick over and support his channel, man. The, these new initiatives from this younger crowd cannot be overstated. It's super important that we bring people from all different age groups, all different genres, all different backgrounds into this community, no doubt about it. So help support Jaden yeah. uh, for his time. Too. Thank, thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming on, Jaden. I really appreciate it, man. It's always a pleasure, Ryan. Thank you so much. Thanks, man. Be well. Yeah. We'll see ya. Yeah, man. Uh, what a super cool treat, man. So I, that's pretty quick growth. I think um, he'll be monetized shortly. So just kind of goes to show I was able to kind of relate and think back to when I started, when my bank was an envelope in the dresser <laughs> and when I needed to borrow $10 on my allowance <clears throat> for the week, for the week, uh, I would go into the dresser and grab that $10 bill. And uh, I was able to stretch that $10 because I was, a I was in with the bartender. So he was able to provide me a beer usually on the house. Uh, so that was kind of cool. So I was able to really, really stretch that $10. Now, in, act in all actuality, it, it helps you understand the value of money. And I think that's a life lesson that uh, you, you, can, you can take away. It'll be with you the rest of your life to where you just appreciate everything that you have. Um, so thank you very much to Jaden for coming on and, and offering his perspective tonight, man. That's really cool. I'm going to cruise up here. I will throw another invite in the, in the, in the thread here um, just so it's there and I'm keeping it fresh. Um, but I'm going to cruise up and see if I can. There was a few conversations that I wanted to jump into, but I was busy listening to Jaden there. So again, a, a, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of good things happen in there, man, at, at 23, it's just going to be a lot of fun to see how this information transpires for that young man over the course of his life and his new spouse, because you know, married when you're year, it was funny when he said fight and money in the same sentence. I, I was thinking, no, 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 don't say that, man. Don't, don't say that. Um, never, ever make that a, a, a point of conversation between you and your household uh, spouse. It's, it's just not worth it. It's not. You got to kind of work together through those things. Um, but um, very, very cool. So I'm going to start to kind of engage here with the group. Um, we've, we've just got us tonight for whatever reason, the live stream is kind of down on views tonight. I don't know if people are out and about in, enjoying their uh, return to normal society. It's time to go to the bar. Yay. <laughs> spend, spend their Friday evening somewhere else other than the uh, live stream. But uh, nonetheless, man, I had some really cool guests on tonight and, um, here it is. Restaurants open around, but no one in them. Um, yeah, I don't. I don't know what they're doing. I um, honestly don't have a lot of fear about this thing. I, I would go to a restaurant right now, but I think they're going to try to keep up on the social distancing thing as well, uh, in respect to what we're trying to do and phase in. I don't think it's going to be ops normal. Um, my personal opinion is such that this thing was around a lot sooner than March. I think it was here last fall. And, um, and that's just my, that's just my opinion. Um, but we'll see how things transpire over the, over the time cream dividends here. How do you maintain frugality? Thank you. At least somebody got that joke. That's really awesome. I appreciate that. And it was really too bad that he was able to step aside right when I was given it, given a little jab there. That, that's kind of fun, but, uh, <laughs> that's no big deal. <laughs> so anyway. I'm cruising down here through the thread and seeing when, what you guys are talking about. And I have to get to watch the part of the stream I missed. Yeah, you missed the exciting part, Gen X. So anyway, Ryan's got talent for hosting live streams. I, yeah, I don't know, man. I, this really kind of comes natural to me. I enjoy the heck out of it. Uh, I've kind of jumped back and forth from a couple of different approaches. 
Um, I, I think it's somewhat of a strategic risk to put the invite out there, but without that invite, I get hit from a lot of different angles through the channel. And all I can really do is put those contacts out there. Email is a fantastic way. Um, I mean, I had Gen X hit me up through the thread asking me about um, some of the some of the affiliate questions, and I, I'm glad to help. So if you guys have questions about some of that stuff, um, all you've got to do is is help. I mean, I, I'm getting mine, so <laughs> I, I don't mind. And I think there was at some point, as a matter of fact, one of the M1 affiliates I found out on my own, and I was able to share that. Um, but uh, for those of you who are kind of taking that up a little bit, I think I think you guys would agree with me that the affiliate piece of the independent investor channel is something that I can offer without any reservation. I, I just do not feel bad about taking some compensation for uh, a, an account like M1 Finance. I think I have kind of come to a final decision on first trade. I think I am going to go ahead and dissolve that option away. I've been back and forth on it, but I, I am considering dissolving that away. Um, they've actually suspended their affiliate program. So um, it, it's going to be one of those things to where if I believe wholeheartedly in the program and I'm recommending it and I'm carrying an account with them and I think it's an optimal opportunity for 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 people, I've enjoyed the platform. I really have. Um, it's just become not quite as necessary for me. Uh, so I may look to condense those accounts a touch and bring that one home. Uh, that way it'll be a little bit more accessible as opposed to having accounts strung out all over the world. Um, but uh, neither here nor there. I really appreciate that compliment. I really do. It, it's just a two hour window that we open up here for people to come on and, and, and give a shout. And um, the two guests tonight were awesome, man. Really, really cool to hear from the subscribers and, to, to, to pulse in with Jaden, I felt kind of bad because I didn't subscribe to him right away. I told him I would, but I subscribed to him tonight. So and that was really cool to, to kind of take a step back in time and, and see how somebody is finding that opportunity to invest at such a young age. Do you guys remember that, how tough that was? I just looked at the value of money when you were that young in a lot of in, in a different light, I think. So to justify investing at that young age, man, kudos for sure. Very, very cool. Uh, let's see. Drinks, bunch of expensive coffee, has zillion streaming services, eats. So Dave from Hidden Freedom Investing, man, very cool. It's great to see you tonight. Treat them finance as well, says brah. Very cool. Staunch supporter. Appreciate the support over the over the over the last few bands very cool some of these folks go way back with me and i didn't know some of these folks have been with me for you know since since new york and uh it goes back man i was just looking i've uploaded 425 videos or something like that to youtube and um and that's why i typically look to mix in some of those lesson types of videos um i i could put out videos like three stocks to buy every day and probably build the channel uh, and manufacture growth. I don't want that kind of growth. I, I really don't. I, I like the product that I have so far with how I'm I'm building the channel. And I think if I was a subscriber to the message, I, I would appreciate that a uh, little bit of governance over the uh, over the channel and, and an acknowledgement that I, I don't want to just ramrod content down youtube's throat every single day i just it's it's not my style like i can't do that um i take that back i could but i choose not to and and uh, so I, I offer those educational pieces they don't necessarily do very good they usually get about a thousand views or so um but that's the type of content that'll last the test that'll stand the test of time because any YouTube creator out there knows that there are two types of content, those contents that are catching that viral wave. Um, and those will typically fall off after a week, two, three, a couple months tops, right? And they're done. Um, but fundamental videos that stand the test of time, th those usually are the ones that um, really start to establish themselves and they start to slowly snowball over time. So I, I really like that opportunity to, to inject those into the catalog um, when I feel like it's appropriate. And I try to keep the mix as good as I can. All right. 
I got a question here from Blood Phantom 81. Anyone else feel like investing in stocks is their business? Yeah, so um, I was actually going there. <laughs> That's exactly the way I feel about my stocks holdings. And some of these other channel creators would agree with me on this, uh, is that each and every stock, there's really an amazing opportunity with some fairly limited downside risk, to be honest with you. Obviously, uh, a rising tide rises all ships. And when the market goes down, it, it pulls everything down, usually. But for the most part, I think some of the misconceptions about the stock market is that it's extremely risky. And it's risky to the point where you can't do it. I think that misconception needs to be re revisited by those people. I think by justifying uh, the stock market with those false pretenses, it really does prohibit people from enjoying the fruits of investing. I really do. Um, but I will expand out and look at each and in, each individual one of my videos as well. I was just looking into last month's monetization and one of my top videos was for sale by owner. And um, I was like, wow, interesting. So I went back and I watched the video and I was like, dang, that, that's pretty good. Like I was good. Why? Because I did it. I, I didn't just study about it and do it. I, it was something that I actually did. And, and I did net some very, very good profit by doing for sale by owner. And I think that benefited a lot of people, but that was one of my top videos. I made that video a year and a half ago. And so that's what I'm talking about. It's mostly channel creators in the group here anyway that I'm talking to. Um, so I'm actually talking to most of you guys um, from that perspective. I know there will be people who tune in after the fact who catch this live stream. Um, but um, yeah, it's, it's super important to understand the YouTube opportunity is that when you hit upload, it's going to be there forever. <laughs> you know, So the ability to slowly grow for you is super important. And if it happens to you know, um, pick up some steam and, and really do some good things. I know Jason mentioned about his Ricola video that um, it, it kind of went viral a little bit and he picked up, you know, four or 500 subscribers, I think is what he said. And I think that's freaking awesome. Like if there's some success being rendered in the community, yeah, I'll be the first to tip my hat to you. No doubt about it. If there's you know, a bad trade that happens or, or you kind of get south a little bit on, on a trade a little bit, I probably won't say anything um, because that's not the time. Uh, and, and I think it's one of those things that eventually is going to happen. Like Bad trades are going to happen. Bad investments are going to happen where you're going to have to take an investment into deep water or worse, stop yourself out of the position. And I, I think that's unfortunate, but it, it's it's inevitable. It really is the game that we're playing here um, in investing. And to understand the totality of the game is probably in everybody's best interest, as opposed to be conveniently naive to it and think that you you can just buy you know Facebook and 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 iRobot and retire someday. Um, I, I really think there's a lot bigger picture to it than that. All right. So I got a comment here from Gen X. He says Netflix is. 90% of my copy. <laughs> Jesus, man. This guy's something else, man. I think Gen X is building an empire. He's doing a good job. He's quite the enterprising YouTuber. No doubt about it. I hold Gen X in a very, very high regard as well with some of the products that he's got out. The Discord chat is one of them, but the YouTube content is second to none. Um, and um, just, we're just glad to have him in the community. No doubt about it. So very cool. Uh, so appreciate you commenting for Jaden. It makes him feel good. That's awesome. And, um, you know, making him feel welcome. Again, you're going to want to kick over and help him support that mission uh, as well. So I am going to cruise down here. I've got Jamie for sure. They're getting woke. The old folks have some biases we have to work on. Um, that's a really good comment, Jamie. I, I agree with you. It's, um, <laughs> I think of my mother. <laughs> when I read that comment um, and I love them both, you know, but they're so old school. They don't even have internet for crying out loud, you know? So trying to talk them into the benefits of, of being connected, you want to have some real talk. You want to have some success on YouTube or some sex, some success on the stock market. You know, you're going to have to, at some point, plug yourself in. 
Okay, you're going to you're going to have to allow yourself the opportunity to get socially connected, um, whether it be through your banking and and to bring myself up to speed. um, That's been part of my success is to provide myself access to all of the metrics and information. I mean, you can get it like a fire hose. So super important to understand, especially if you're a new investor and you're you're looking to get involved. You got to get connected, man. Otherwise, you're kind of in the dark a little bit. I got Disney for a week to marathon Mandalorian and then cancel it. <laughs> Jesus, man. Canceled it? What for, man? Yeah, I, I don't know. I Ozark to the entire uh, net, that series. And I, I like Netflix. It's pretty cool. I'm enjoying the service. It's it's pretty fun anyway. So we'll see what happens. <laughs> and no. Uh, I had a spammer Graham Stefan hit my video up, man. For a second, I thought it was the real Graham Stefan. And I was like, you're not the real Graham Stefan. So, but, and it wasn't, he had like 300 subscribers. So I don't know. Maybe it was, maybe it was Gen X. I don't know. He's, he's got a sense of humor like that. Maybe it was for sure. <laughs> but uh, hey, I got Ryan Giffen in the group here for sure. I appreciate you kicking in here, Ryan. Hope everything is well for you. Hope the business is doing good. Uh, I presume that it is, and um, all the best to you and the family for sure. He's going to get to big to have the work. Very cool. Yeah, I think you're right about that, um, and I think that's what he's shooting for. To be honest with you, um, it seems like uh, he's got that golden touch, which is good. It's really good. I'm um, just uh, it'll be it'll be fun to watch the projects explode a little bit, and uh, we'll see where it takes them. It'll be fun. Be really cool. I wish him all the best. Eddie Young, he's very clever. He's talking about Jaden. Very cool. Mandalorian. Here's an endorsement for the uh, Disney Plus streaming service. I don't know. Disney took a bump today. That was nice. Very cool. If industrials could get out of their own way, that'd be kind of nice because I'm pretty heavy industrials right now. So it'd be nice to see that kind of come back and start to act the way that I think that it should. Why am I always late? (laughs) <laughs> uh, come on, man. You're good. I got another half hour to go. I had another half hour to go and nobody wants to come on and uh, hang out in the independent live stream next, next week. I'm just going to schedule it and I'm going to schedule it with just me. So I have to prepare mentally for my deliberation. If it's just me, that's uh that's throwing down. Uh, given Apple TV don't have it, no Disney Plus anymore after free time ran out, no Hulu anymore after free. <laughs> Jesus, you're just making the making the rounds, man. Getting your free subscriptions. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Very cool. Yeah, this is a great opportunity. Actually, a live stream tonight. We're down in the count. I've made 99 cents. I, I think. I think Jason gave me 99 cents. Um, which I'll probably end up rendering 62 of those cents because YouTube will take their cut. So <laughs> I appreciate that, Jason. Very cool. It was probably that 10 minute plug that I gave you at the top of the live stream, but I'm good. I'm glad to do it. You know, whatever. Um, I, the most entertaining part of that video is when you made a little shout out to the big boy. I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, that was pretty cool. And they're big. They're big boys. They can take it. You're right, Jason. Yeah. All right. They survive. You just poke a little fun at them. You know what I'm saying? With the scribbling on the whiteboard and the inability to edit a video. Yeah. You know, um, if you have that many subscribers, perhaps maybe you can just pay somebody to teach you how to do it or just pay somebody to do it outright. (laughs) Right. So who knows, man? Anyway, you don't know me very well. He's talking. Oh, he's talking at Hidden Freedom Investing. I was talking. I thought he was talking to me. Matt's in the group. Um, so Gen X, the reason my Disney was suspended. Yep. Doing all right. Man, Gen X is kind of running the show here in the sides. This is interesting because I'm getting actually focused on what you guys talk about when I'm running the live stream here. This is kind of fun. I, I kind of feel like a loner here by myself on the live stream, and you guys are having your own conversation here. It's pretty funny. <laughs> Stock market's messy. Well, I, I'd be careful a little bit. I would invest for the future if if something happens. The, the problem with this market now is it's going to take a systemic positive jolt. Uh, and 
it's very possible that we could get that at any point. So you kind of have to be careful betting against it and buying into a lot of the idea that it's just going to go back to previous lows. I, I just don't see how that is going to happen. I, the, one day they'll come on and say, we're not going to have a V recovery. And, and today they're like, we're in a V recovery. And I feel like saying, make up your freaking mind. It looks like a V recovery now. <laughs> Whether or not it turns back down and kind of starts to chop a little bit and trade in a little bit of a range, well, that's yet to be seen. But this was a very, very drastic drawdown in the market and then a very, very drastic uptick in the market. So never really seen anything uh, like this. I would like to see the volatility calm down a little bit. I, I think I would like to see that the majority of the time. Uh, it, it makes a lot of people lose faith in the market when they're seeing what they're seeing now in, in that you know, something can happen introduced from, you know, another country that can affect us that much. And then it takes over, over funding, over liquidity to bring the market back from the Fed. So which really is the part of it that has me the most worried, to be honest with you, on the back end of this thing, um, when when we're looking to make sense of this. That, that's what I'm going to look at is the seven trillion dollars on the books or eight trillion on the books now with the Federal Reserve, because that that money just doesn't go away. You know, that, that's just the way of it. So um, I got a brave soul coming in in the ninth inning, man. It, it, actually, it's about the eighth inning, but uh, Ryan hasn't come on the channel for a long time. He just kicked on to say hello. I'm going to bring him on right now. Um, because otherwise I'm, I'm just sifting through these comments. I'm going to continue to do that. It was kind of fun for me. Um, but Ryan took all my fun away, man, but I'm going to bring him on here and uh, say, hello. I haven't had him on for a while. Ryan, how are you, my man? Ryan, Very cool. you're doing great, brother. Uh, you said no one was joining you and I feel like it's been a while. So I'm going to hop on, say hi and, and, and catch up, man. Yeah. How's the family, man? We're doing good. You know, when, last time I was on, my daughter was just born. So she's four yeah. months now. Oh, she's so, so cute too, man. I, yeah. I I don't follow that many people anymore on Instagram. I don't just I I I kind of cut it back and I just follow the channel creators. Um, you're being one of them, and and I like okay. that. I like staying connected at least that way. I I don't, you know, it's kind of fun to see you know how how things are growing. And then um, how have you fared through this whole thing? Are, are you you doing okay? Yeah, you know, um, you know, first with, with the family, my wife, uh, she's actually made the jump to become a full-time YouTuber. So I don't know if you actually knew that she's a YouTuber. I did. She's and, very successful, right? She's yeah. So around, so she, she's been able to outpace her income as a part-time paralegal. And, um, and so since we had the baby, she went full in, but during the quarantine, you know, we weren't seeing my folks or anything like that. So she had, and I had to go to work and I'll explain kind of what's been going on in my business um, to try to like, keep it going and thank God, like we made it through there. There was a scare there for a while. And you know, when your, your revenue drops 90% and your bills are still like 10, you know, $30,000 a month, you know, like <laughs> for real, man, for real. Wow. So God. being in a house like, all day, for, like over a month straight, which is you know, a four year old and a four month old can be pretty, pretty challenging. But now luckily it seems like um, we just feel more comfortable, like seeing my parents now and, and uh, it's it just like tomorrow night we're gonna go on a date, so that's pretty exciting. And uh, just like <laughs> we haven't like gone one night without the baby, so th things are doing good. But I, we did have a scare, like I said, I, I supply to to um, to restaurants and hotels, and you know, it's in the South Florida area, people come here for hospitality, so it's usually a great business. But um, I'm but I'm heavily in the chemical business, so I had to shift my my market over to, like hand sanitizers and things like that. So we actually started booming on the other side. And, um, and, and I have a couple other like businesses that aren't doing as well, but like that kept everything going and things are going to be okay. And that's great to hear, man. I, wow. It, it sounds like you had kind of a scare there. I, it hits home with me cause you got the kids period, you know, yeah. you, you don't, you don't like it to cut that, that deep, but this thing yeah. just kind of came out of nowhere and, and it's like, what we're, we're in it now. So deal with it. So good on you for your you know, flexibility. And, and I, I saw, I saw the post with you carry have having the chemical, the jug or whatever, you know, yeah. I was like, man, awesome. You know, Hey, you're doing what you got to do. Good on you. That's what it takes. And, yeah, yeah. 
I mean, I don't know if you've ever had it when like you come home and like there's there certain parts throughout life that's challenging and and you look at your kids and these like little humans rely on me and like can you know there, there's some kind of like it gives you some extra energy or makes something somehow you figure out a way to make things happen but no the, things were good luckily i was able to you know capitalize on on the down part of the market and um good. deploy a good amount of money and, and and get the portfolio well above like i'm over about one hundred twenty five thousand dollars in the market now so just um, you, just you, or is you, you guys, if you and your spouse, are you guys kind of on the same page or do you run your own? Yeah, yeah, so, How do you guys yeah, do that? Much, if you don't mind me asking. Yeah, my, my wife, we have one and I, and you're very good about um, really tax strategizing. Like, so I, she has an IRA and I have a Roth IRA. Like we could do multiple ones. And then I have just a straight taxable account, which I speculate in. And, um, but I also like invest in real estate in my businesses. So I, I have about 75,000 of that 125,000 is tax sheltered, but I like having extra liquidity to um, just because I, I, I'm hoping to buy like a commercial building and all this, like if, if real estate gets weak, I'm trying to keep certain amounts of uh, accessible liquidity to capitalize and grow my business to grow my wealth too. So, yeah. And the business is centered around this service aspect that you do down there. That's kind of the core business that you run, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I have a, I have a route of over 500 uh, restaurants, hotels. We, we run a route. And um, so I actually hear the baby crying. <laughs> um, yeah. So, so it, and it's residual income. <laughs> like uh, customers all have commercial dish machines. We supply the chemicals that go there. I lease some ice machines. And I'm actually in the process of, um, we, we also sell equipment, but I'm hiring a project manager right now who designs like, controls the whole project. So if you want to like build a restaurant, you get an architect and you, you get a project manager to design the restaurant. And um, which, you know, I, I won't go too deep in that, but like, it, it's pretty exciting. He writes a couple million dollars a year in business and he wants, he's like really excited to work for us. If I had a dose of keys, I'd give it to you because you, you, you might be in the running for, for the world's most interesting man. You know, <laughs> you, 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 you got a YouTube channel, you're running a business, you have father, husband, you know, wife's yeah, a, yeah. aspiring. That's pretty awesome, man. You got a lot going yeah. on. Uh, you're not that old, are you, Ryan? I turned 31 in March. Uh, you're young. You get the sky's the limit for you, man. Yeah, cool. yeah, that's always been my appetite. I just always kind of just try things out and uh, just try to find ways, ways to manage it. But um, yeah, man, I just wanted to pop in, say hi, and uh, I always and, enjoy hearing from you. Awesome, uh, a pleasure, man, a pleasure. How you still? You still got your Tesla stock? I do, I do my half a share, dude. I'm making a freaking fortune with that half a share, man. I, I just, I, I guess if there was some takeaway to my perspective on Tesla. I did it the right way. Now, it's always one of those things to where I, I could have taken a 10 share position. No problem. I've got the capital to do it. But I, I was just kind of sissified from Tesla. And, and it does go against my, my, my investing philosophy. But I was like, you know what? I know the stock's going higher. There's just way, way too much groundswell of support behind the name. And yeah, I'm up 110% right now. So had I put any amount of money into it, 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 it you know, it's, it's just part of my aggressive portfolio. And it was just a name out of the 12 that I wanted exposure to. So, yeah. and being an M1 finance, I'm, I'm not kidding you. If, if I had it in my taxable or in my Roth, it would have been gone already. No doubt about no. it. I, w I would not have had the patience to sit here on the name, but since it is in M1, I'm kind of like, I feel a little restricted um, because M1 finance, really, you got to be careful with, with that platform. You really do. I don't, I'm just not a fan of selling. If you want to invest and just invest forever, it's a great platform. But as right. far as having the freedom and flexibility to try to get your price or even entering into stock, you've got to be long because you, you've got to, Whatever at 10 15, the price you get is what you're going to get. So you, you've got to yeah, understand that. That's been the biggest reason why, like, I maybe for I can move an IRA over there. I use Merrill for, for that. Um, that that's, it's been like big, the, probably the biggest reason why I've never uh, really got really involved with the platform just because the, the, the trading windows are just, it just seems odd to like not. I mean, can you set a limit price and then if it doesn't fill? 
by that time or is it just all market orders or it sucks this is <laughs> how it is man i mean straight up here's the here's the problem when, when i came out with my original uh, video reviewing m1 finance i was pretty down on it and a lot of people came back and they're like ryan you suck you know you, you're you getting this whole thing wrong and i was like, okay yeah i'm wrong yeah one trading window that's acceptable in today's environment you know okay fractional shares that's but the thing about it is and the piece that i missed because i did do a self reflection and i'm like what what am i missing here i will say this i enjoy investing in m1 finance i have two accounts with them I've got the spider portfolio that's passive, and I've got the growth portfolio, Google, Facebook, NVIDIA, Netflix, Tesla, right? All the growth stuff. So in those two strategic accounts, think about it. I'm really maximizing the benefit of M1 Finance, okay? Partial shares in the one and portfolio redistribution in the other. So I'm actually yeah. exploiting both of those options, and I'm doing so passively. But for people who don't want to hear me out on this and just think it's another a brokerage platform like freaking Merrill, they don't compare. They do right. not compare. And I, I think there's a little aspect of hype there. But here's yeah. the thing that the younger investors, they want that. They want that mobile application that's cute and and, and aesthetically pleasing. And it, it is fun. I, I get it. But th that only goes so far with me. Okay. Right. You know, right. personality only goes so far with me. When I compare it to Merrill, Sorry. Yeah, no, no. I, I enjoy Merrill. I've recently uh, started some Fidelity as well. Uh, I do like that platform. I, I'm to say I have raw, but like I, I mainly use it to get exposure to, to crypto because it's something I use and and I've done well with. Um, probably looking but now that the portfolio, the Robin portfolio is almost like fifty thousand. So I'm like, yeah, that's a lot of money to have and um, that uh, to carry with them. I think so uh, Just as it gets there. Just crypto, Ryan? No, no, no. Um, there's about something that's crypto. There was um, a mixture between um, dividend growth, uh, and I call it disruptive innovation, like Tesla. And, and I have some holdings in genomics that are doing very well and fascinating to me. And then, um, and then just your, your big tech, your Microsoft, Facebook, and stuff like that too. Exactly. Yeah. It's a mixture. It's performed well. Like even year to date, I'm up like thirty percent. A lot of that had to do because I was really focused on Tesla around two hundred dollars. That was like my, like my biggest position, and Since and then were, really, that was a win. That was a win, really, man. Yeah, yeah, and, and now I'm gonna this week. You know, J Max made a lot of good content in regards to Nikola Motors, and I've recently started doing my, my research. So I'm gonna come out with a video, kind of comparing the two and seeing if it's something I, I I'd want to buy or not. And the cough drop, the cough drop company. All right, cool. Nikola. <laughs> yeah, nice, yeah. nice, man. Yeah, he did really well with that, man. I, I didn't think there was that much demand on cough drops. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> you do a lot of research. It's very, very fascinating because, because I actually, I don't know if you know, I, I have the Model 3 and uh, some things yeah. that they're doing with, with the hydrogen to capture data and keep batteries lighter, I think is fascinating. But, um, yeah, the stuff well, well, that, that, that Tesla's not doing, it, it's amazing that Nikola has the, um, you know, has maybe an edge strategically as far as the technology goes. Is that fair in saying? I mean, are they going to give yeah. them a run for their money? Tesla's yeah. so far out front, you know, that's the problem. Yeah, I think I think uh, Nikola trying to trying to capture hydrogen for my research is a lot harder than maybe it's being perceived to be. And, uh, and, and Tesla's looked at it as a solution and uh, they have battery day coming up. We'll see how all that goes. But I think we could still push Tesla to become, you know, possibly like a four or $500 billion company is I, one of the biggest reasons why I bought the car is I'm fascinated with self-driving. It is really amazing. Like my car now stops at red lights and green lights by itself. It, it, it sees everything around it. And it's really interesting how Tesla's going to market. They're not like asking the government for permission for driverless cars. They're just making it a little bit better so often. So it's like gradualism. If they just threw a full self-driving car on the road right away, it wouldn't be very palatable for the public, but he just slowly every quarter new software updates improves it, and and it's it's believed that they have it, they have it. They're just the way to get uh, legislative legislative approval and for this. They keep on throwing little bits, and by the time that they say let's take the human in the car, they can demonstrate so much self driving has occurred. So I think that's the ace in the hole for to still be long Tesla.
Yeah, for real. I don't know, man. There's there's bulls, the ARK Investments, man. She's a big bull on Tesla. I think it's the biggest part in her portfolio. And they're calling for multiple thousands of dollars per share. Uh, and there's people buying it here. There's freaking people buying it here. Um, yeah. I, I won't do that um, personally. Yeah. Uh, not here. Uh, you know, if you were going to get an entry, I don't think you're going to get 200 ever in the history of the stock again. Uh, I, I don't. Um, however, you know, it, it's violent enough to where you could potentially get an entry at maybe half of where it's at right now. Um, but maybe you'd be lucky. You'd be lucky. Yeah. I mean, I, we all have to assume like Q2 is not going to be great for a lot of companies. And um, it's just amazing how well Tesla has done right now that it's still $800 a share. And meanwhile, their factories have been shut down. Like, yeah, it, it, it's, um, yep. it, it's pretty amazing that. And like, I, I just, I can't believe how just like, like tech is like the new safe haven. And, um, and even do you, do you follow, like, I, I'm really interested in arc. Like she has a great fund in genomics, which that's what I said. That's what I said. Yeah, but Arc, do, you, do, you follow, follow, do you follow no. her? You know, she has a genomic fund, which I've wanted access to, but like, it, it's more complex than I can understand. But, um, mm -hmm. but it really, I mean, it, it's, I kind of specked into it, but believing like, that, like the, the idea of genomics is that humans, we, we take like prescriptions and like to mask things that are wrong with us, but genomics, like yeah. gene sequences and rewrites your code. And is it, but like it's perform it's up forty five percent year to date, and um, and it's still it's thriving in this environment. And I'm trying to understand like why it seemed. And Catherine Woods, and I'll leave you with this. She predicted this before. She said when crisis hit, things that are disruptive move faster, and things that are weak fall faster. Like it kind of accelerates the future. So yeah. all interesting stuff. Yeah, for real. Gosh darn man. I wish you would have come on in the top of the stream, Ryan. I don't know if you're probably busy. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah. Just getting the kids to bed. <laughs> I know, man, you're super busy. Mom. Congratulations, man. I'm, I'm really glad to hear that you, you kind of weathered this deal. It sounds like you did. Um, and just all, all the best to you, man. Just keep killing it. Uh, you got your hands in a lot of different pots and I, I wish you and the family nothing but success for sure. Keep killing right. it. Thanks for letting me pop on, pop on. Really appreciate it. <laughs> you got an open invite, Ryan. Take easy, brother. Hey, brother. Later, man. Very cool, guys. So I'm gonna I'm gonna cruise through this thread here um, and uh, see if there's any other comments, and then we're gonna start to wrap it up. I'm gonna move on with my evening, and uh, maybe chill out a little bit. Thank you to Ryan Giffen as well. Man, the guests have been freaking awesome tonight. I've, I've had a lot of fun uh, just checking in with folks. Very cool, and um, just cruising through. Here we go. Thanks for this platform. You're very welcome. I appreciate it. The opportunity to bring people. It's amazing to me. Uh, this, this would be one of those uh, communities that if I tripped and fell into, I'd be like, wow, this is crazy. I thought I was the only one that thought like this, but, um, it's really interesting, man, having a guy like Ryan come on and, and, uh, really give us some insights on, on what he just went through, man. I, I was like, wow, that that's pretty, pretty awesome. I, I know, you know, they've, they've got the new child that they, you know, that they got, and that, that's, that can really add a lot of, uh, a lot of pressure, but I'm glad to hear that, uh, that, uh, is doing better. And that's kind of the feeling that I get is that is the worst over, you know, I have my answer to that. And, um, I, I'm such a positive guy that maybe you can sense where my answer to that may go, but, um, I hope I'm right. I really do. I, I, if I'm going to be wrong, I need to be proven wrong. But until then, I'll continue with my optimism for sure going forward. I hope to show my kids Disney classics I grew up with for sure. That's going to be the key right there. Very cool. I learned frugality from the most frugal person on earth. Awesome. Do please, please tell. <laughs> Very cool. At least nobody's calling themselves a minimalist, I guess. You know, just finishing the last season of Sons of Anarchy. Very cool. I got to check that out. Awesome. Cruising through the comments quick, guys. I'm trying to cherry pick and see what we've got in here for folks saying hello. Very cool. Matt says he misses his Rolex. I think I would miss a Rolex if I ever owned one. Um, I would miss my Citizen. If I, if I ever broke it or lost it, I think that'd be a crying shame. I've had that thing for years. 
So anyway, cruising through. I see a lot of sidebar conversation. This, this is really, really instructive for me to see what you guys talk about when I'm actually on a busy live stream. Cause this is, this is like just us tonight. Kind of interesting. <laughs> Very cool. There's Jerry. Me and my wife, we have blended finances. Yeah, that's the right answer, my friend. <laughs> you don't, you don't want to try to be playing that uh, separation of power crap. It doesn't work that way, at least in my household. And I, I, I choose it to be that way. Powerful skill to learn the language of money. Yeah, I just think it's more of a discipline. And the more you can practice it every day, the better you get at it for sure. Dave said he's um, he starts off the conversation um, with them in this way, and maybe maybe save that until later on in the night, Dave. That might work a little bit better, right? <laughs> Very cool. Freedom says I back you up for sure. <laughs> Very cool. So Jaden's sharing his link there. Cool, man. I'm going to start to wrap up the live stream tonight, guys, uh, for certain. really want to thank the guests that came on. Jaden was one of them and uh, Ryan Giffen as well there at the end. I wish Ryan would kick on at the beginning, man. Just I, I enjoy the heck out of talking with him. And it's kind of fun. He, he's talking about, you know, I haven't been on in a while, so I thought I'd pop on. And, uh, you know, I, I think you guys are all trying to be cordial. I, I do appreciate that. I think it just adds a nice dynamic for you guys to come on and, um, but uh, re really want to thank the guests tonight. It was it was a lot of fun having having you guys on. Um, but anyway, I'm kind of at the bottom of the thread here, guys. Very well. I will go ahead and wrap this stream up for sure. I want to bid you guys uh, uh, all to be safe. All right. Have a great rest of the weekend. And uh, we'll continue to monitor this market and, and kind of just allow time to set in. I think that's going to be about the best uh, remedy for this market, for sure. Uh, I, I think looking backwards, the only thing that I can say for sure is that by remaining invested in the market, that um, was true this time. And it always has been true uh, that if you just remained uh, solid on your program, uh, that that was probably the best way of approaching this volatility as hard as it, as it might have been. Um, that that usually is and and always probably will be um, the best thing to weather volatility. I also want to thank Chris. Thanks for coming on. I really appreciate that. At the beginning of the live stream, it was really cool to uh, pulse in uh, with one of my beginning investors, certainly. Uh, but with that, guys, we'll close it down. Have a great rest of the weekend and uh, we'll catch you next Friday again for the Independent Investor live stream. So uh, look forward to talking to you guys again. Be well, be safe, and we'll check you next week. Take it easy, guys.